here with Gavin Stone, Los Angeles Dodgers right-hander. Gavin, I appreciate you joining me, man. Let's just get right into it. You're having a phenomenal first full season in the big leagues. When you think about what last year was like for you and then coming into this season, what was something that you wanted to prove to yourself and to this organization? Yeah, um, you know, dealing with failure is always a tough time. Uh, and uh, how you come out of it is kind of like the character that I feel like uh, it's when your character shows. And so uh, knowing that and knowing like where I was at last year on the mound and stuff like that, like mechanics, delivery, you know, pitch types and stuff like that, pitch movements. Uh, I knew I had a lot of work on. And so just taking that mindset of, you know, I'm behind right now and, and like I have a lot that I need to improve on uh, and taking that into the off season really helped. Um, and uh, and then, you know, seeing success is a big thing. And so seeing success early this year was, was huge for just, you know, like helping me calm down and get settled in and, and uh, you know, finding that consistency. Mentally, as, you know, a guy in your, technically still your rookie season, even though you had the cup of coffee last year, pitching for this organization, pitching in Dodger Stadium where Sandy Koufax is a legend, right? Oral Hershiser, who you know really well. What is it like pitching for an organization where it's World Series or bust every year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's where you want to be. I mean, if you want to play baseball at the highest level, like that's what you want to achieve. That's what you want to go for. Uh, that should be the goal for every team, I feel like. Um, and to be in an organization where it's it's not just the goal, but it's it's demanded. And if you don't, if you don't meet those expectations, then it's it's a it's basically a loss in the season. Um, and that's what I love about, you know, being in this organization is that, is that they want to win and that's what I want to do. Growing up in Arkansas, who were some of your influences as a player growing up? I was a shortstop when I was growing up, so I was a big Cardinals fan. And so David Eckstein was like the guy that I loved. And like, I was 22 growing up. And so um, I actually got a chance to talk to him, FaceTime him early this season. Um, but yeah, him, um, Chris Carpenter, whenever he was with the Cardinals, uh, Joe Kelly, he was probably my, you know, my favorite pitcher just because of the stature, like kind of similar body build, smaller, still through a hundred. Uh, uh, and also like, <clears throat> really like Joe because when he was a starter, he threw slower and then uh, mechanical changes and stuff like that next year he was on hundred. And so that really gave me like confidence that like, you know, like smaller guys can actually like try to throw harder. How cool is it for you now to be teammates with him? Yeah, after saying that. Yeah, that's, it, it honestly is the coolest thing because I remember whenever I was, you know, going to Cardinals games uh, and and seeing him or, or Memphis Redbirds game and, and getting the chance to see him whenever the Cardinals would play in Memphis. Uh, yeah, it was really cool. And so um, when we traded for him last year, I was yeah. I was I was down in AAA, but you know, I was super excited to get up here and meet him. You've had a, a different path than most guys have, you know, as a starting pitcher where. You were a reliever majority of your time at Central Arkansas, your freshman, sophomore year, you closed. Uh, then your junior year, you become a starter. COVID happens, shortened season, you get drafted. And so you haven't had as much time starting in the, you know, as a professional as other guys. Do you feel like you're still learning how to be a starter as a professional even right now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially up here, you, you, you learn every game. Like, I mean, you're learning something new every game, I feel like. Um, but being in the minors and stuff like that, it was, it was great just to kind of pick up on the starting like feel of things like like going long in games, saving the bullpen, uh, what pitches to throw and what counts, uh, what air what locations to throw to, uh, and then like the consistency part of it. You know, being good over a long period of time. That's what I feel like is a huge thing in being a good starter. I love coming out of the bullpen. I came out of the bullpen a couple times last year, um, but. Um, yeah, I love that closing role, that drilling that you get, and that kind of like that dog mentality that you kind of have to get into for that for that kind of role, uh, and then just taking that into starting has helped a lot. That's the biggest thing, just being able to take that adrenaline when you're running out and try to bottle that up before starts. Is there is there a way that you've attempted to kind of recreate that energy as a starter? Yeah, um, scouting wise and stuff like that, dive into what weaknesses that the hitters have, and uh, you know, knowing the weaknesses give me a lot more confidence and stuff like that. And so it kind of calms me down. But, you know, you still always feel that whenever you're pitching in front of 40,000, 50,000 fans. I mean, that adrenaline rush is always going to be there. But knowing, like, um, what I need to do to be successful helps a lot in, like, calming that down. I want to ask you about one of your teammates, Shohei Otani, that seems to be 
must-see TV for not only fans and people in the media, but for players as well. What is it like to watch him swing the bat on a nightly basis? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, I've never seen anybody swing the bat like that. Uh, the ball he hit the other night that went out of the stadium was by far the most impressive hit that I've ever seen. I know that everybody in the dugout, whenever he hit that, was just like nobody made a sound. It was just like, holy crap. Um, but to see him do other things, uh, you know, uh, around the bases, I mean, still stolen bases he gets a year. Uh, um, just how hard he hits it consistently, like, it, it's unbelievable. I, I, I don't even really know if there's a player that, that hits it like him um, uh, and as consistent as he does. Um, but I haven't even got to watch him pitch yet, so being able to, you know, watch him get into bullpens and stuff like that would be really cool. It seems like you pick things up really quickly since you got into the big leagues last year, taking what you learned and applying it this year. What's been the biggest piece of advice that you've gotten? It could be in the big leagues or, or maybe in, even in the minor leagues about, you know, being a pro and, and being a big leaguer. Yeah, I mean, really just letting stuff go. Um, you can't dwell on, on failures too much and you can't, you can't uh, lean on success too much. Um, you kind of have to stay level-minded. Uh, don't get too high, don't get too low. Um, that's kind of the best advice that I've been given. Um, but also, you, you learn a lot by just watching uh, guys go through their bullpens, everyday work, weight room, stuff like that. And like, like for instance, Kershaw, watching him go through his daily work is, is unbelievable. And so to get to, uh, you know, watch that and try to emulate that is, is, uh, is um, some, my guess, the key for success because he's just, he's been doing it for so long. That's a guy that's going to be a future Hall of Famer, right? First ballot, maybe the best pitcher of his generation. What are some of the things that you've talked to him about, about pitching in L.A., pitching for the Dodgers, putting that Dodger blue on, or even some things technically, mechanically, that you've already started to implement? Yeah, just how to attack hitters. I mean, the way he attacks hitters, um, he's right at them. Uh, and he, his mentality is, is uh, you know, what I try to emulate out there. Um, he's a dog. And, you know, you can tell it every every start day that he has. I've only gotten to witness a couple of his starts um, last year, but uh, just the mentality and, like, the presence that he brings into the clubhouse whenever he starts. Uh, and so I talked to him a little bit about that. And and so I'm um, just trying to emulate that. And, like like I said, I mean, not get too high, not get too low, but just be a dog. Now, you're a proud Arkansas guy. Back in your hometown, Lake City, Arkansas, there's a mural that just got finished of you. I don't know if you know about it yet. Uh, have you gotten to see it? Have you got family see it and, and tell you about it yet? Yeah, it is actually pretty cool. I know, I mean, Lake City is a town of 2,000 people, so we all know each other very well. And so um, this idea got brought up um, maybe last year or a couple of years ago, I can't remember, but um, to see that actually put on that that building, you know, where I, where it all started for me was um, pretty special. Uh, um, and you know, my family's sending pictures of it; they're taking pictures of it. Uh, and so I'm excited to get back home and see it. Uh, it'll be really cool, I think. You're gonna sign it? That that's the plan? Sign the wall? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got to now. Yeah. Last thing for you. I know you got the fresh ink. Uh, is that your first? Yeah, yeah, that? yeah. So I, I, as a guy who's tattooed, I like asking people the stories behind. So do you have a story behind this one? Um, really, my, I went to University of Central Arkansas and we were the Bears. And so um, uh, our pitching coach was really heavily, like he taught us heavily on, you know, mentality side of the game. Um, um, and so that's where I think I really like developed, you know, the uh, that kind of mentality, that confident mentality. And so um, just, Knowing what I what I learned at UCA and and the people that I met there, I met a lot of my best friends and stuff like that. Um, met my girlfriend at UCA, uh, and so that's that's why I got the Bears, just because it, it holds a special place. Gavin, I really appreciate the time, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.